So you're wondering why would anyone in the right mind ever climb a mountain on a fixed gear since it just seems like unnecessary suffering? Or maybe you're somebody that enjoys unnecessary suffering and is wondering exactly how to climb on a fixed gear. Well, you're in luck because climbing on a fixed gear is one of my favorite things and I'm here to show you how to do it today. Because today I am re-attempting to climb this mountain behind me called Mao Kong Mountain here in Taipei. The first time I tried was about two years ago and I failed and had to run my bike up. So hopefully I can get up today on my fixed gear without getting off. Come along with me today to learn how you can climb mountains as well on your fixed gear. What's up? I'm Zach Gallardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and consider hitting the like button and subscribing so YouTube knows to recommend you more fixed gear videos just like this one. To learn more about what exactly gives steel bikes their buttery smooth and a lively ride quality, feel free to check out the video I made with our channel sponsor Wampy Cycles when we talk in depth about steel tubing. In that video we talk about the specific types of steel and how builders choose steel to balance weight, durability, and ride quality. Check out the steel tubing video by clicking the card above or by sticking around until the end of the video. To climb a mountain on a fix here there's three important things you need to keep in mind. Your mindset, your gear, and your technique. I admit this is going to sound kind of dumb, but your mindset is the most important thing if you want to get over a mountain on a fixed gear. You need to be climbing on a fixed gear for the right reasons and to have the right motivation because it takes a specific type of person to want to do something that's so, on the surface, unenjoyable. For me, climbing on a fixed gear is probably my favorite part about riding a fixed gear because it teaches me what my limits are. It allows me to redefine my limits and challenge myself and allows me to do things that I honestly did not think that I could do. And in the event that I can't climb a mountain on a fixed gear, I know exactly what I need to do to get better. But in the events that I'm successful, it brings a deep feeling of satisfaction. I feel very capable knowing that I did something that most people wouldn't even attempt to do just because of how hard it sounds. And to be honest, it is pretty hard. And you need to be honest with yourself and with your expectations. The challenge of climbing on a fix here is exactly what makes it so alluring and so fun in the end. Know that it will definitely be more difficult than climbing on a geared bike, but also know that it's not impossible like a lot of cyclists believe. You need to have the mindset that the bike that you have and everything on it is enough. You already have everything you need to succeed and to get to the top of that mountain. You might not think you can do it and there will be times during that climb where you just want to turn around and go home. Your lungs and your legs will be screaming, your heart will be pounding, it will feel like it will explode. It's definitely painful, but once you get to the top, it's one of the most rewarding experiences that I've had on a bike. The first time I tried climbing this mountain behind me was on a basic AF $400 Cromoly fixed gear. But then a few months later, I rode the same bike on even longer and more challenging rides with more elevation gain. With that said, your bike does serve a secondary importance. So here are some changes that you can make to your fixed gear that'll help you get up a mountain. Climbing on a fixed gear is probably one of the most challenging things that you can do with a fixed gear. It's definitely the wrong tool for the job. Pretty much you're always going to be in the wrong gear ratio. It's going to be inefficient and that's going to make it painful. Because of that, it's ideal to have a gearing that is the most pain that you can tolerate on the steepest part of the climb that you'll be doing while still giving you a high enough gearing so you can comfortably pedal down the descent. A good baseline gearing for climbing is around 2.5, whether that's 40 19 or 44 17 and depending on how confident you are in your strength as a rider in relation to how steep of a climb you'll be doing you could either gear up or down accordingly for example the climb that i'm taking on with me today i am actually having doubts on whether i can make it on 49 17 but that's part of the fun of climbing on a fixed gear is doing your dang best on the wrong tool because you only have one gear you want to squeeze as much power as you possibly can into your drivetrain and the best way to do that is with proper foot retention road clipless pedals with something like a stiff carbon sole will give you the best power transfer but toe clips and straps or foot straps with platform pedals are perfectly capable to get you up a mountain as well. Whatever foot retention system you're using on your bike, just make sure that 
that you buckle down because you're going to need to pull up as hard as you can to get to the top. Handlebars can also help or hinder you depending on your setup. The main thing with handlebars is to have a lot of control over the front end so you can get your weight over the front wheel to make it easier to spin the rear wheel. Bullhorns feel really good to climb on since they protrude well out over the front wheel so you can get your weight over and spin. Wide risers say 56 to 70 centimeters wide are also a great option because they give you a lot of control over the front end so you can really lay down the power and their width allows your chest to open up so you can breathe deeply and give your legs oxygen. Drop bars with hoods are one of the most versatile setups that you can have on your bike and they're also great for climbing since the hood hand position also lets you to get your weight over the front wheel to make it a bit easier to spin. Weight is also important but the weight of your bike isn't all that important. The extra weight on your body will be a bigger determining factor of whether you can get to the top or not. Even someone who's pretty lean like myself could stand to lose 10 pounds of fat here or there. But at the same time, if you're trying to lose weight, climbing mountains is a great way to do that. If you want to easily lose weight, you could leave more stuff at home. The bare essentials would be a light toolkit, a couple bottles of water, and maybe a snack. I have about seven pounds of camera gear on my back, so I'm not exactly following my own advice, but we'll see if it works. As long as you have a decent bike and it's not a 35 pound Walmart tank, it should be light enough to get you up. Even though I do like to climb fixed a lot, I don't stress about weight on my bike too much since a pound or two here or there isn't going to be enough to make or break the climb. As for preparing yourself for the climb, you might want to consider dressing a bit lighter than you normally would because climbing fixed is a high effort activity and you will be riding at a really low speed, maybe five miles an hour or slower, so you won't be getting that nice breeze like you normally do. And of course, eat enough food, stay hydrated, and don't bonk. You're using a lot of energy, so make sure there's fuel for the engine. But honestly, the best thing that you can do is to just hop on your bike and see how far up a mountain you can get. My bike is ready for this attempt. I'm on 49.17, full steel fixed gear, drops with hoods. So let's see if I can make it to the top without stopping. And if I can catch a breath, I'll give you some tips for techniques on how to keep your cadence because that is the most important thing when climbing fixed. Let's go. Fixed gear climbing. Welcome to Pain Paradise. My grandpa looks really concerned for me. This is not his porch. Holy crap. Holy crap. Oh, Lordy. Have mercy. I'll make it. My bottom bracket is it's creaking. I think it's time to get 75s. Pedals digging into my feet. I need sturdier shoes or to shut the fuck up. That's what I need. Why? Why do I do this to myself? Oh yeah. Swimming. Oh, that's done. That's a steep bend. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Why, Jesus? 
Where is it? Where is the top? Where, where is the top? He's just grinding, slowly grinding. He's gonna make it. Look at that guy just cruising, he's gonna make it. What a cheater. Yo, where'd they put the top? Oh, I found it, I found it. Okay, I found the lookout. We made it, boys and gals. All 2.7% of you. I was pretty brutal, but I actually made it to the top. Climbing fixed is always really rewarding for me. Not because of the view, although this view is lovely if I wanted to Enjoy this nice view, I just take the gondola for three dollars down the street. The thing that's rewarding for me is when I start the climb, sometimes I legitimately do not know if I can make it to the top. Although my goal for this climb was to get to the top without stopping. I did have to stop once, so I didn't quite reach that goal, but I do have some tips for climbing fixed that'll help you do things that you didn't know that you could do. But daylight's dwindling fast, so let's take this descent and we'll talk about cycling techniques at the bottom. Oh, oh damn. Oh, coming in hot, look out. Am I glad I have a front brake? All right, cycling techniques to get you up the mountain. When climbing on fixed, the number one most important thing is to maintain your cadence. And it will be a very low cadence. You will be grinding and you'll be pushing a lot of power through the pedals. It's really important to keep going and to maintain your cadence while climbing on fixed because if you lose your cadence, it is really difficult to get it back. And if you don't have sufficient strength to get it back, you're probably going to be walking your bike up the climb. Compare that to when you maintain your cadence and try to ride your way all the way up. Each rotation of the cranks gets you to the next rotation while on fixed. So if you can chain together rotations, no matter how slow your RPM is, you will eventually make it up the mountain. Because of that, it is helpful to know the climb well. If I knew the climb well a couple days ago, I am pretty confident that I could have gotten all the way to the top in one go. The top of the mountain was only two bends away from me. If I had known that, I definitely would have been able to push through and make it. It's also helpful to know the steep versus the gradual sections of the climb. If you know where the gradual sections are, attack on those to build up your cadence to carry you through the steeper sections. You need to treat cadence like it's free money when you're climbing on a fixed gear and take it whenever you can because if you ever lose it, it'll be five times as hard to get it back. Mentally, it's important to keep your mind occupied and knowing the climb well will help you do that. Knowing where the top is gives you a tangible goal to work to. And while you're on the bike, choosing a marker down the road and then riding to it and stringing together these markers will eventually get you up the mountain. Because thinking of the ride as a series of, oh, I just need to get to the next tree and after that I just need to get to the next street sign is a lot more digestible than I need to climb 3,000 feet. It's also super important that you take control of your breathing. Your heart will feel like it's going to burst through your chest, your lungs and your rib cage will be screaming and it'll feel like your legs are about to fall off. To keep yourself going, you're going to need a lot of oxygen. So remember to breathe in deeply through your nose and try to breathe out slowly through your mouth. And in the event that you lose your cadence on a super steep section, it's helpful to zigzag to effectively reduce how steep the grade is. On my climb, because I was pushing too high of a gear ratio, I actually had to zigzag for about 85% of the climb. When you're doing this, just be aware of your surroundings and make sure that you're not blocking the road or zigzagging through a blind corner. And lastly, use your foot retention to your advantage. That way you'll use more muscles in your legs, making it more likely 
you'll get to the top. But again, the best thing you can do is just to throw your leg over your bike, choose a mountain, and see how far you can get to see what your limits are. Because fixed gear climbing is such a personal journey. It's so difficult that most cyclists don't ever even want to attempt it. It doesn't matter how many roadies or even mountain bikers pass you on the way up. All that matters is that you meet them at the top, ready for their strange looks and lively conversation. Feel free to check out this video that I made in collaboration with Wabi Cycles, where we dive deep in what makes a steel bike come to life for a balance of weight, durability, and ride quality. And fixed famous shout out to Stan Strong 108 and Ryan Witt for their contributions on Patreon that help to make these fixed gear videos possible.